All right, everyone. Uh, welcome back. It's uh, week seven in the uh, Family Beatdown Fantasy Football League. Here's your update. Uh, getting right to the uh, Notre Dame and USC uh, storyline. This is getting more and more interesting as the BCS, uh, first BCS poll came out and has Notre Dame slotted as number five for now and USC is number 10 for now. So um, nothing, nothing changes. Both teams get a very, uh, a very good bowl come New Year's Day. However, um, being the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, eternal optimist that I am, what I'm seeing the storyline develop is a, uh, an upset uh, being set up uh, for November 24th when the uh, fight mean Irish uh, come out here to, to Los Angeles for the annual meeting with the Trojans. That'll be on, uh, like I said, on uh, November 24th, Thanksgiving weekend. Um, it's going to be set up. It's not in my recent memory. Um, certainly, no scholar on this subject, but uh, it's uh, you know it's rare when the uh, the Trojans can play the spoilers to uh, to uh, to Notre Dame. But in my mind, that's what's shaping up. So keep going, Notre Dame. You're six and zero right now. You had an excellent win against Stanford. Um, maybe you know Stephon Taylor was over. I don't know, but either way, hard fought game. Excellent goal line stand. Overtime victory. Uh, very exciting on national television against Stanford. Uh, coming up next week, you take on BYU, so be careful of the letdown. BYU is a good team, uh, and you did have a very emotional win there against the Ferd. Uh, USC, on the other hand, uh, went up to Washington, sputtered a little bit, but did put things together, doubled them up, um, and took the win. USC, as I said, is now uh, number 10. Now, by the way, we're going to switch from the AP ranking as the official ranking of the Family Beatdown League to the BCS ranking as the official ranking of the uh, Family Beatdown League from this point on. Finishing up the idea, uh, USC finishes, uh, excuse me, uh, hosts Colorado uh, this week. Um, not much of a uh, of an opponent, not much of a team so far, but I don't want to shoot off my mouth too much. Every game is important. Uh, taking a look at our league, um, we had some excellent scores this week, with the exception of one team, Mama of Four Boldens, the only the only uh, laggard at 65.4. With that, everybody else had very good games. Lowest point production looks to be about 120, excuse me, 101 for Bear 6, 106 for Rednecks. Um, but then 128, 144, 199.6 from Grandpa. So what a week, man. Uh, but we have to be careful this week because we have a whole bunch of teams on bye. On bye this week are the Atlanta Falcons, the Denver Broncos, Kansas City Chiefs, Miami Dolphins, Philadelphia Eagles and the San Diego Chargers. So what is it? The six teams on by a full one-sixth of the league. Our Thursday night game has Seattle against San Francisco. We'll go through the buys and the Thursday night game a little bit later on. But taking a look at the week that was, uh, smell this, even though I got the Bonehead of the Week award, thank you very much, Rick Mentz. I, I appreciate the heart there, but how much of a Bonehead am I really if I won? But yeah, I acknowledge I had the wrong quarterback in. I didn't think Robert Griffin was going to start. I certainly didn't see him putting up 163 on the ground, plus all those uh, all those touchdowns and the passing yards. But even so, 154.3 to 126.9, I bested Rebecca. Gerard Invincibles, as I mentioned, almost to 200, 199.6 to 132.5 over Beho Wreckers. Rednecks 106 to 101 over Bear 6. Mama of Four Boldens continues to struggle. Blue and Gold continues to. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it. Well, no, I mean, Blue and Gold doesn't continue anything. Blue and Gold's been stinking up the joint for the whole year. He's on a winning streak of one. Uh, he's two and four now, so whatever, Jacob. Uh, but anyway, Blue and Gold takes that one. Mud Dog still 6 and 0. 138, 128.8 over Blood, Sweat, and Beer. And in our closest game of the season, so far, Decepticons dropped it by .6 to Tyson's Mighty Mullets. Taking a look at our standings, Mud Dogs continues to lead, uh, to be on top of the heap here, uh, having scored 1,034 points this year. Holy moly, Rick. The next closest is, uh, is actually Grandpa's at 867. But uh, 1,034. Goodness. 6-0, Mud Dogs, number one in the Cardinal Division, overall number one ranking. Taking a look at the rest of the Cardinal Division, Decepticons and Mighty Mullets in second and third. Both of those guys would make the playoffs, followed by Blue and Gold, Blood, Sweat and Beer, and Mama for Boldens. Down in the class of the league, the Gold Division, smell this, 5-1, uh, sitting atop the league at the number two overall position, followed by the Rednecks, Invincibles, Show Me Them TDs, Beho Wreckers, and Bears 6. 
Uh, one through six has Mud Dog, Smell This, Rednecks, Decepticons, Gerard Invincibles, and Mighty Mullets. We are almost to the halfway point of the season. Actually, we're we're at the halfway point of the season. When you think about um, uh, when you think about, we only play thirteen regular season games, and then we have our playoffs. So this is our halfway point right here, right now. We've got to get focused on those playoffs. You've got to get serious, people, if you want to proceed. All right, taking a look at next week's matchup. Smell this gets B-Hole Records. B-Hole Records has been having one hell of a time waking up in time on Sunday morning to fix his lineup and certainly doesn't think about it uh, you know, during the week. Um, I actually texted Alex on Saturday night reminding him to cover up for his buys and uh, you know, he didn't do it. At any rate, right now, uh, there's a lot of holes on the B-Hole Records. Matt Ryan is down, Jeremy Macklin is down, and Dan Carpenter. On my side of the equation, i got to cover for Antonio Gates and Julio Jones. i got a lot of work to do. Right now, it's 98-80 to 80 in my favor. I'm going to give myself the pick because I think I will cover. I will at least have starting players in my lineup. I'm not sure how they'll do. And Alex, on the other hand, may or may not decide to show up. Looking at Mama Four Boldens and Blood, Sweat, and Beers. This is Veronica ver, uh, versus Danny. And all of a sudden, my internet connection has slowed to a standstill. That's awesome. Get two browsers going here. Uh, Mama Four Boldens has lots of buys to cover up. Uh, right now, Philip Rivers, LaShawn McCoy, Sean Drawn, Jacob Tammy, lots of holes. Danny, on the other hand, only has to cover from Malcolm Floyd. I'm going to give the pick to Danny. Veronica's having trouble covering for buys, and this is going to be her worst week yet. Gerard Invincibles versus the Rednecks. This is Grandpa versus Dawn. Uh, Dawn is uh, okay. Dwayne Bowe and Reggie Bush on by. Otherwise, Andrew Luck against Cleveland. Adrian Peterson against Arizona. Grandpa needs to cover for Jamal Charles and Brent Selleck, but Grandpa is loaded. Right now, it looks to be 96.1 to 104.9 in favor of Danny. I'm going to give the pick to... Grandpa, with Aaron Rodgers facing St. Louis, I expect to see the Aaron Rodgers like we saw this week against the Houston uh, Texans, not the Aaron Rodgers we saw last week against the Indianapolis Colts. My, oh my, I don't like the Aaron Rodgers that we saw last week. Mud Dogs, ha <laughs> 6-0. <and> Decepticons, ha ha, 4-2. Rick is uh, still got his one arm tied behind his back with uh, no tight end. That was his strategy for Tyson. But at any rate, uh, Rick doesn't have any issues with buys this week. And Jed just a few with Tony Gonzalez. It's 131-117 now. Uh, Brady against New York Giants. Andre Johnson against Baltimore. Jordy Nelson against St. Louis for Jed of the Decepticons. Mud Dogs, Breeze against Tampa Bay. Jed will be at that game. That will be his first NFL game. Shout out, Jed. Look for us. Wave to us on camera. Hold up a sign. Paint your face. Do something. any rate, uh, I can't give it to a 6-0 and team. I'm picking the Decepticons because someday my mojo is going to actually work. Show me them TDs versus Bears 6. This is Rebecca versus Michael. Michael, uh, even with all six teams, all these six teams on by, Michael is covered. And right now, this looks to be a dead heat. For, uh, Rebecca has to care of the cover for Eric De Decker, which she will. But it's 103.59 to 103.49 in favor of Bears 6. Uh, we've got two, two, and four teams. I'm going to go with Michael on this one. I think Tony Romo. Oh, no, wait. Tony Romo. Uh uh. Uh uh. Sorry. Back up. You race. Rebecca gets the pick. Uh, and in our game of the week, Mighty Mullets, Little Tyson, Younger Brother, versus the Blue and Gold, Big Brother. Tyson brings his 3-3 three and three record into the House of Pain and Jake's 2-4 and four record. Both teams look okay with bye, although Tyson needs to cover for Michael Vick. Don't be like Alec. Cover now, and you need to get a quarterback. That's going to be tough. Um, boy, that's going to be real tough covering. Let's see, does... Tyson have anybody on his bench who happens to wear a quarterback number, and he does not. Yikes. Any rate, tough, tough cover. Malcolm Floyd, Michael Floyd against Minnesota, Antonio Brown against Cincinnati, Ray Rice against Houston for Muddy Mullets on the blue and gold side. Russell Wilson in for the starting nod. Uh, I think that'll happen. Although, no, right, Peyton Manning's down. Look, Jake's actually covering. Jake is managing his team. 
Hakeem Nix against Washington, Stevie Johnson against Tennessee. I think you know where I'm going. I'm going to give my nod to the blue and gold. So let's go over the uh, bye weeks and the Thursday night game one more time. So the bye week, six teams, Atlanta, Denver, Kansas City, Miami, Philadelphia, San Diego, all on vacation this week. Thursday night game is Seattle versus San Francisco. That's it for this week. Get your lineup set. So long.